Okay, we're on part two of Sabbath observance. Now, particularly, these, these teachings are for all of those um, organizations that acknowledge the Sabbath, all of them. Even if you're a, store, a storefront church, or either if you are some big institution like Worldwide Church of God, or the Seventh-day Adventist Church, or uh, any organization that acknowledges the Sabbath. This, this is aimed towards you. This is part two, okay? This is part two. Just want to let you know there's part one. I am Prophet Six. You can just call me Lewis. You don't have to say Prophet Lewis. You don't have to. If you want to, that's fine. But I, I don't care nothing about that. You know what I care more about? The truth. The truth getting into your bones and sinews. The truth becoming a part of your DNA. This is part two. Now, as I stated last on in the last teaching concerning the Sabbath, I stated that the Sabbath is um, the, the foundation of the Sabbath is building the kingdom of God. Only, only in the last teaching, I clearly told you in no uncertain terms that when the Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye First, the kingdom of God, it means seek only the kingdom of God. If you're seeking another kingdom, if you're seeking another kingdom in the name of seeking God's kingdom, you broke the Sabbath. I don't care what day of the week it is. Oh, I know that's heavy. That is heavy. Ooh, when the Lord showed me that revelation, it blew my mind. I had to get on my face and repent of all my sins as it relates to the Sabbath. I'm like, man, how, how could I not know how to keep the Sabbath? So the Bible says in the beginning, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created the heavens and the earth. Now watch this. When it says in the beginning, it means first, just like it does in Matthew 6, 33. And I'm not sure if the Hebrew and the Greek word for beginning and first is the same thing. I don't care. We know beginning means first. And we know first mean beginning. So it don't matter what it says in the Hebrew or the Greek. The Holy Spirit has interpreted that scripture all by itself. So when God says in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. In Genesis 1.1, he's teaching us how to seek first his kingdom. In the very first verse of the Bible. Ooh, that's good God Almighty. In the beginning of the Bible, God's showing us how to seek his kingdom. When you go to uh, when you go to Genesis chapter one, verse two, we're going to we're going to progress with this. Because see, if I keep going on like this, it's going to be a whole bunch of videos, 10 minute videos, <laughs> about a 300 part series. I want to tell you, this this thing is inexhaustible. Because when you tie the Sabbath with the kingdom. Oh, man, you can tell a whole lot of stuff we're doing wrong. Everything. We're doing it for the devil, but we're doing it in Jesus name. And I'm just talking about Sabbath keepers. I'm not even dealing with Sunday keepers. Good God almighty. I'm not even dealing with Sunday keepers. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, good God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh boy, this is beautiful. Look at this. Look at this. And the earth was without form and void. And and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now we know, according to Revelation 17 10, that waters represent people, multitude, nations, and tongues. Uh, uh, waters is also a symbol 
of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us in John chapter 3 and John chapter 7 verse 38. You know, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. It's the Holy Spirit. Out of your mouth, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. You see, the Bible says in uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 30, Ezekiel chapter 47, it talks about the waters that issue out of the sanctuary. And it says that these waters, no matter what these waters touch, it live. And it flows from the, the source of the water. It's from the sanctuary. Oh, boy, I can get all into that, but we're going to leave that alone. See, I'm trying to teach you about the Sabbath today. I'm trying to teach Sabbath keepers about the Sabbath. Now, look at this. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God. It moved upon the face of the water. So when you seek, oh, God, oh Jesus, when you seek first the kingdom of God, like it says in Genesis 1, 1, in Genesis uh, uh, 1, 2, you're guaranteed the power of the Holy Spirit to accomplish whatever work you need to do as it relates to the kingdom of God. Oh, oh hallelujah. You want to tap into the power of the Holy Ghost? Seek first. The kingdom of God. First means only. I'm going to ram that into you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Seek first means seek only the kingdom of God. Yeah. That's what they don't teach us. They teach us to seek God's kingdom. They, they're, they're teaching us a counterfeit kingdom of God by saying that the kingdoms of this world, if we seek the kingdoms of this world in Jesus' name, we're thereby seeking the kingdom of God. Hence, uh-uh. See, if there's no distinction between the kingdom of God and the kingdoms of this world, Jesus would not have said, my kingdom is not of this world. So that lets us know that there is an, uh, uh, there exists an opposite to his kingdom, a contrast to the kingdom that he established. Seek first the kingdom of God. The word seek first the kingdom of God means do not seek the kingdoms of this world. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because preachers not teaching this. They're teaching us the way that we build up the kingdom of God is by taking over the kingdoms of the world. Uh, uh, that is not Bible. Uh, uh, that is not Bible, people. And earth was without form and void. Darkness. Oh, boy, good God. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Revelation. And God said, let there be light. Uh-oh. So once the spirit of God start moving, once you start first seeking his kingdom, the Holy Ghost moves on you and light all it, it, it light illuminates your heart and mind. It illuminates your life. It illuminates your marriage. It illuminates your relationship with your children. It illuminates the relationship with your friends and your enemies. It, it illuminates the, the, the contrast between your relationship with the world and the world's relationship with you. Oh, good God almighty. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And God called the light day and the darkness night. And God saw the light that it was good. It was good light. The Bible says in Matthew chapter six, verse 23. Uh, let's look at that text. Matthew. Uh, chapter 6, verses 23. We're, we're told, But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. But if, thy, if the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? That's not actually the text I wanted. It says the light of the body is the eye. And just to let you know, just to throw this in there, Prophets are symbols of eyes in the Bible. Wherever you see multiple eyes on anything in the Bible, it's, it represents prophets. Because prophets, prophets were anciently called seers in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 9 and 10. Okay? Light seers, the prophets. Okay? The light, the body shall be full of eye. 
the, 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 the body shall be full of light. So we look at this uh, right here. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and the evening and the morning. And the God called the, the light day, verse 5. God called the light day and the darkness night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Now, everything that we see here is creating. Whenever you seek the kingdom of God, you're going to produce things that are conducive first and only at the exclusion of the world's governments. You're going to seek it first. You're going, to, you're going to create things that establish the kingdom of God. Just like God is doing in Genesis chapter 1. Woo! This is part 2. Part 3 right after this one. Thank you for your attention. If, hey, if you have any questions, call me, Prophet 6 or Lewis. Prophet Lewis, whatever you want to say. Call me at 815-929-1988, in Jesus' name, amen.